that that I do know that God is speaking to me about, and that is through John chapter 9. Over in John chapter 9, I'm going to kind of walk you through this. Uh, in John chapter 9, beginning at the first verse, there was a, a child, that, a man, uh, that was born blind. And then Jesus and his disciples came through and saw this man that was blind. And they asked Jesus a question. They said, who did sin? Did this man's mother or his father sin or his parents? And Jesus told them, said, well, neither he nor his parents sinned. This was just given that the manifestations of God might be made known to him. Now, it says to him. If you look there, and, and I believe it's around the uh, third verse, it says that the glory of God might be made manifest to him, underlined to him, or in him. So when you, when you look at that, you got to make sure that you read it right and you hear it right. Because I'm going to show you some things about it. And it goes on and it talks about Jesus talking about as long as he was in the world, he was the light of the world. And then he goes on and he talks about specifically understanding what it means to be the light. So he takes and he spits on the ground. Now, now get this. Jesus is taking a saliva from his mouth spitting on the ground and from what he has uh, introduced to the to the dirt he takes that and he puts this on the man's eyes and then he gives him instructions and he tells him to go to the pool of Siloam and wash now the pool of Siloam was two miles outside of where Jesus was according to historians when he laid hands on this man and this man received the instructions as to what was going to bring him deliverance for his, his eyesight. So always remember this, that faith is connected to instructions. Yes. Everybody say that faith is connected to instructions. Faith. Now say this, faith only comes when I hear the instruction. Because I could have imagined what it was like to hear somebody spit and then anoint your eyes. Now, can you just, just shut your eyes and just imagine, just shut your eyes just for a second, and just imagine, you know, someone spitting, and now, just a few seconds after spitting, take and put something moist on your eyes. Now, the question is, with your eyes closed, the question is, will you be offended or will you follow the instruction? With everything that's going on with our life and the way we are, you can look up now. With everything that's going on with the way our life is right now and what, what's going on with us, life seems to be unfair. I don't know about to you, but to me, sometimes life seems unfair. And sometimes it seems like somebody's playing a joke on me. I, I can only speak for me. But what, what do you do when it seems like God is allowing the devil to play a joke on you? All your life you've been struggling with issues and situations and, and it seems like no one cares. Because they'd rather see you in a position to where that they can lord over you than for you to be delivered from it so that you could be set free to do for yourself. And so in faith, what God is actually giving us, he's given us the instructions to the rest of our life that will give us freedom from everything from birth that has held us back. And so this man goes and he washes in the pool of Siloam. And as he was away, here comes the critics. They come to Jesus with all of the issues about the man. They never said it to the man, but the man has to come back and walk in and hear them talking about him. Well, That's one thing to be on the outside looking in, but when you're on the inside and then you can see and hear and see everything, that the things that you used to not pay attention to 
because you were so busy trying to live and survive that now you come back free and delivered. Those things that you thought was significant to see is no longer important because all you know is that you were blind and now you can see. So there's so many more wonderful things out there in faith that once we get God on our side and deliver the kind of faith that God responds to, that we don't even have to answer our critics. The work speaks for itself. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's important. I remember talking Wednesday night, I was telling them about the Gafford commercial, the Gafford Steel commercial, or the, the siding place, to where he comes in, it, it's his Jones and Associates, where he comes in at the end of the commercial, he says, we do things right, and the proof is in the, okay. See, everything about faith is in how you respond to the work. You understand what I'm saying? So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. Now, <clears throat> now, it's very important that we understand where we're going with this, because I want to take you over to another place, and I want you to see something in, a, in another place. And I'll come back to this man uh, in a minute. But over in Luke chapter 8, in Luke chapter 8, Jairus comes to Jesus and you have to note that all of these places is right after uh, Jesus uh, he, he deals with people about faith he deals with people in their faith and he's already in the process of healing somebody so <clears throat> Jesus begins to do something very unusual while going to Jairus' house, because Jairus told him, said, said, Lord, if you, could, if you could come to my house, my daughter will be healed. I know this. My faith says it, and I believe it, and that's all that matters. So Jesus says, I will come. Now get this, get this, and along the way, and I'm going to see if I got anybody like this, you know, you dealing with something that is so hard for you to deal with, and you got to have the kind of faith that will leave you with the kind of deliverance that you want. But along the way, Jesus stops and deals with somebody else's faith, uh -huh. and your faith is running out. Uh -huh. All right. go ahead, go ahead. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. Seems like everybody else is getting what you've been praying for. All right, just, just, okay, I'm going to talk to this side. You prayed and you prayed and you, you fasted, you prayed, you paid your tithes, you came to church. You did all the right things, but it seems like nothing for you is getting better. And all along the way, God is still telling you to have faith. And all of a sudden, somebody out of the ordinary... Somebody that wasn't even supposed to get blessed. Yeah. According to doctor standards, she was supposed to be getting ready to die. Yeah. This woman had an issue of blood for 12 long years. That's a long time to hemorrhage. And for your blood to keep accumulating and for you to keep on making blood after, after hemorrhaging means that you got a pretty good system. But, but look, at, look at this. The woman said to herself, she says, the word is coming. And if I can apply what I can see in my mind, yes, yes. I know I'll be made whole. Yes. Now, now, faith without works is dead. No matter how many times you say you want to be healed, you got to get up and do something. Well, if, if, you know, if you know you got high blood pressure, you know, you got to do something. Leave the pork chops alone. You got to do something. Come on now, be, be honest about it now. We expect for God to do, do for us, you know, everything, but we don't want to do nothing. 
we don't even really want to have faith. We just know that mama told us that when we get in trouble to pray and this is it and this is where we're going to be and this is going to be this and when you pray, when girl, if you're going through, all you need to do is pray. No, it's more to it than just praying. First of all, you got to line yourself up with the word because God's not going to bless you in your mess. Put your neighbor and say, God ain't going to bless no mess. You know, I don't care how crazy you act, God is not going to bless you in your mess and then jump back over your mess and still be God. Because he will not do that. The Bible says that he is not partial. He's not particular. That means that he's, he's not going to bless somebody in sin and then come over here and I'm trying to live right. No, I'm not trying. I'm living right and then going to bless you and then won't bless me. God can't be God and do that. So on the way to Jairus' house, here comes a woman. She was creeping through the crowd, and everybody was prancing around Jesus. Everybody was jockeying for position, and everybody was trying to get a glimpse of Jesus. Amen. Everybody was looking for Jesus to show up, and Jesus was showing up. But all of a sudden, they had to deal with the fact that, that Jesus was going somewhere other than where they were invited to go. And so when you invite God to a place and, and when, you, when you introduce God to what your situation is, you got to have faith for your situation. And Jesus knew that Jairus had the kind of faith that would introduce him to the miracle that he wanted. And so Jesus told him, said, well, since you asked me in the midst of this crowd and I see the kind of faith you have, he says, I'm on my way to your house. He says, show me where your house is. And as Jesus is walking, all of a sudden, a woman is pressing her way. Somebody said pressing. pressing. Faith means that you got to press through and you got to go through your situations. You got to look at things and you got to know that what's for you is for you. And, and, and no matter where God is in the building, if you have faith to believe, God will come to you. <laughs> and reach you at the point of your need. Now, now, now let's, let's just digress here for a minute and let's look at the, her situation. On one side, Jesus was going to heal. And on the other side, a lady is saying, I will be healed. Amen. So faith in long term means that I'm going to be and faith in the present means I will be healed. God is going to do some things by faith, but today you got to have the kind of faith that meets you right now. That where he becomes a very present help. Is there anybody in trouble? Anybody going through something that you need God's assistance with? You got to know that he's a very present help in the time of your trouble. That means that you can no longer afford to allow Jesus or God to pass you by. Your faith requires for you to do an act of God that means that if I don't get it now, I may never get it again. God is so close to us today that if we don't get it today, it might not be no tomorrow. It used to be where they used to say, here today, gone tomorrow. But you could be here today and gone the next minute. So you got to kind of have, you know, the kind of tenacity that this woman had. This woman said, I've tried everything else. I've tried somebody that specializes in blood. What do they call those kind of doctor? Hematologist. I've tried a hematologist. Somebody that works with the blood. And, and you know what? And all I did was spend my money. Because I'm no better than when I started to see them. How many know that there are some things that doctors can do, but ultimately you got to turn it over to God? 
well, 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 my grandmother used to put it like this. Man's extremities are God's what? When man has reached the extreme of what he can do, when he has gone as far as he can do, it's time to turn it over to God. When you work what you had to work and you saw that what you were working did not happen, you got to turn it over to God. They used to sing a song a long time ago back in the Baptist church. I don't know, you know, if they sung it in any other church. They used to sing a song, God specializes. Yeah. And then they say, have you any rivers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, you have better leave me alone. I, I may go to sing in there. <laughs> and have you any mountains? Yeah. That you can't seem to tunnel through? God specializes in things. That seems impossible. And he will do what no other power. I didn't say man, what no other power can do. And then they'll get to rolling, they'll start doing the hook. Well, that's what they call it now. A hook, God specializes, and they're saying, oh, God, God specializes. Y'all gonna leave me out here by myself? <laughs> all right, well, all right, well, that's okay too. That's okay too. I know you want to sing it, but you just embarrassed to sing it. But, but you know what? In the middle of understanding that God specializes, see, His specialty is to come in when you can't do nothing for yourself. So this woman says to herself, she had to speak to her spirit in order to make her body do what she saw in her mind or her spirit that she needed to do. Faith is such to where that you got to believe in what you see in your spirit even though it has not materialized in the natural. It, it means that it's an absolute reliance on God to do for you what you can't do for yourself. Hebrews chapter 11, it says Abraham was dead, Sarah was dead, but God gave them a son. How did he do it? By faith. It says that they all died. Hebrews chapter 11, they received not the promise, but it says that God gave them a good report. And at the end of the day, God rewards them for reaching for something in faith that they saw denying what they had in the present life, looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me that I got to deny what I see and feel right now in order to reach for something that's not even certain? Oh, yes, you got to, if you want God to heal you, you got to believe that it's possible. Because the Bible says also in the book of Hebrews, it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So no matter how much you pay your tithe, no matter how much you jump and shout, if you don't have faith, it's impossible impossible to please God. No matter if you remodel this whole building by yourself and you have no faith and you have put just works alone, the Bible said we're not saved by works, but we are saved by the work and the faith that we exhibit and we have a consciousness of God that gives us the ability to know that if we don't get a dime, we're still rich. If we never get healed, I'm still healed. If I never get delivered on this side, I know one day I will be delivered. A wretched man that I am, I've helped you get delivered. I help you get set free. But I asked the Lord three times to deliver me from what I was struggling with, and God said, no. Have you ever helped somebody else but you couldn't help yourself? <laughs> Seem like you had it to help somebody else, but when it's your time, you don't have it to help yourself. 
That's what I'm talking about. Believing God that in the middle of the parameters of who we are, we trust him in spite of what we go through. In spite of how big the crowd was, the woman said, if I can just get close enough, I don't have to have his attention. I don't have to be in the spotlight. I don't have to be on the stage. I don't have to be sitting on the front pew. I don't have to be sitting in a place of prominence. All I need to do is just get to Jesus enough to take care of what I'm going through. Is anybody who's going through some stuff and you need help from God? You don't need no help from no man. You need God. I need God, I need God, I need God, I need God, and the only way I gotta get him, I gotta get him through faith. I can't do it by my flesh. I can't do it with you because you're up and down. Sometimes you treat me right, and sometimes you treat me bad. Sometimes you love me, and sometimes you don't. It doesn't matter with you, but it matters with God. If I can just have the faith, then if I can just touch. And the minute she touches Jesus, faith moves in the parameters of who he is. She touches the talith, which is his prayer shawl. And the Bible says, in the, in the wings of God is healing. And she touches the hem of the talith. And when she touches the hem of the talif, hem and virtue left Jesus' body. I didn't come to destroy the law, Jesus said, but I came to fulfill it. <laughs> he says in the book of Malachi, he said, prove me now who you with that I would open the windows of heaven to you if you do right. I'll I pour you out bless that you don't have room enough to receive. And when virtue leaves Jesus' body, Jesus stops going to Jairus' house to deal with this woman. And he says, out of the crowd of over thousands, he said, Who touched me? Who touched me? <laughs> I want to ask a question. When was the last time you touched Jesus in faith? <laughs> when, when, when was the last time you prayed long enough? When was the last time you prayed hard enough? When was the last time you saw God right just enough in order to receive the and the healing that you need for your soul. In spite of who was around you, you boxed them out of your mind and you made sure that you had God on your mind and you kept doing what you needed to do in order to receive God and you forgot about what you were going through and you said, if I could just get to Jesus. I don't know about you today, but my faith is telling me this. He's in the building. And you got to reach out for him. You got to get your faith in line and reach out for him. I know what you're saying. I got to have a certain amount of money in order to make it. But you need Jesus more than you need money. Because all it takes is one touch from him. And he'll make all your money problems go away. And you say, I just need to be known by people. Oh, baby, if people promote you, they can put you down. The promotion that comes from God, you're being persistent so why you're not qualified by because God will give you faith. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, so quit reaching for things that people are reaching for and reach for God. And if you seek the kingdom first and all of his righteousness, then all these other things will be added. you got to do it by faith. Sometimes my faith wavers. You know why? Because I look at you and I look at my situation and I say, if you are in the situation I'm in, there's no way we can do this. There's no way we can come out of that. But I have to trust God that he'll make everything all right. If you ever 
position position where you had to trust God. Have you ever looked up in your cabinet and wondered where your next meal was going to come from? Have you ever went to the restaurant and found that something was going around with your body and you had to look to God to help you? Have you ever been out in the grocery store and only had enough money to get what you needed? Really what you wanted, but you did not have it and God made a way. your battery was dead. <laughs> and batteries cost $118 nowadays. It ain't no $39.95 no more. It's $118 plus the car. And if you don't have a car, you add another $20 on it. The car is an old battery. <laughs> you gotta trust God, man. Have you, have you, I, I know I have. Have you, ever, have you ever went to work getting ready to have a good day? And they walk in and they tell you, say, we're we going to shut down. <laughs> I was making some good money at the bank. And brother, they got the downsizing and shifting things and they shifted my whole department out. But I had spent all the money, well, except for what I had in my profit sharing and, and my 401k, you know. And back then, that was, they matched you dollar per dollar, and, uh, and I had it going on until they walked in and gave me a pink slip. Well, because I had overspent, not preparing for the day that it might happen. <laughs> and here it is 26 years later and I'm just coming out of some of the debt oh, y'all don't, don't understand <laughs> so what, what do you do when you're getting five figure salaries and then you're reduced to zero salary but you spent like you were making five figure salaries Are you going to look, some, look to somebody else? Or are you going to trust God? I can honestly tell you this. I've never had to beg for something to eat. My family has never been without clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord has really blessed us. You know what it did for me? It made me get up and start my own business. Because I got tired of relying on somebody else. And I said I could do this for myself. Started my own business. Amen. Some of you need to take the initiative to do some of that. Quit laying around and and, 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 and worrying about stuff that don't matter. Amen. Get up and do what God is telling you to do by faith. Amen. Sometimes I get enough, sometimes I don't. Well, but at the end of the year, hallelujah. we made another one. Yeah. Now what are you saying? I'm saying that the woman that was on her way to her healing was stopping Jairus from getting his healing for his daughter, they thought. The woman touched Jesus and Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples looked at him, and you can look at that in, in, in that scripture. And the disciples looked at him and said, are you crazy? 
The Bible didn't say it now. Don't go out there and say it. The disciples said, Jesus, are you crazy? No, the Bible didn't say it like that. But they asked Jesus a question. They said, Lord, there's so many people here, and there's so many people brushing up against you, and you have the audacity to say, who touched you? And Jesus looks at him and says, if you understood what I understand, and the kind of faith that was pulled from me, you'd want it too. And he looks around and everybody backs up because when Jesus turns around and stops and asks the question, everybody, he's better than E.F. Hudden. That old commercial of E.F. Hudden, I don't even know if they're in existence anymore. It used to be that when the E.F. Hudden speaks, everyone what? Jesus turns around and everybody moves away and so happened a woman was in so much reverence not fear not fear like shake oh he gonna get me in so much awe of what was going on in her body can you imagine after being hemorrhaging for 12 long years that your blood flow stops and immediately you're no longer anemic <laughs> but your body is receiving strength not only from what you got from Jesus but from how your body is supposed to function That she starts shaking because her insides are just getting a dose of true healing. What medicine couldn't do. <laughs> you know, there's so many medicines that they, they tell you they're going to help you with this, but it got so many side effects, it knocks out that. But can you imagine getting a dose of, of the Holy Ghost? And she had never experienced it in that form because it had not yet been given to men. And she pulled on his garment and not only got healed, but she was filled with the Holy Ghost at the same time because there can be no transfusion of blood from Jesus without getting filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and she steps back. And something was going on in her body and like the old folks say it hit her in the top of her head and went down to the bottom of her feet and she turned around and she faced Jesus and she was trying to get away from it and Jesus said who touched me and she said I can't lie about it I can't deny it yes it is me and Jesus said well don't fear First of all, I want you to understand that you operated in faith, not in fear. He said, so fear got to leave. He said, don't be afraid. He said, for your faith. Not to heal you, your faith has made you heal. It's a difference between getting, getting faith to be healed, but it's a difference between being healed and being made whole. The woman's faith not only got her the healing that she needed, but it relieved her of her conscience to the point to where that her body had made her conscience go bad. And so because of all of the pain that she was in, every day getting up in pain will make you go crazy. But she was made whole. And then Jesus looks at her and says, your faith has made you whole. And Jairus is getting the news right now that his daughter is dead. While you're having faith for the deliverance you need, somebody else is holding up Jesus in their faith and you're needing Jesus to come to your house and you're wondering why you're not getting it and you wonder what happened to you from birth because there is such thing as sin curses that have been placed on the life of people that they had nothing to do with and now this boy is being, this man is being delivered from his blindness and this man that is called Jairus is needing healing for his daughter and then in between the three 
Jesus looks at Jairus after this woman and starts praising God for what she just got. Jesus said, I'm still on your way, on my way to your house. Look at your neighbor and say, he's still on his way. <laughs> to meet you in your need. He's still on his way. Delay does not mean denied. Hallelujah. Just because you can't trust him don't mean he's not there. He's there, baby. Just because you don't see him there is not based on your feeling. It's based on your belief. If you believe that you can have it, if you don't see it, just stand on your faith. You can have what you say. Just Jesus said, Jairus, he said, have faith. He said, Jairus, just hold to your faith. Hold on to what you got. I'm still on my way to your house. He said, I'm coming with you. He said, I didn't stop just because I heard this. And as they approached the house, they started laughing because Jesus is saying she's asleep. And they said she's dead. The coroner's already come in, pronounced her dead. And Jesus is saying, yes, she might be dead in your sight, but she's asleep in mine. And all that matters is that you're asleep in his sight. Now what does that mean? Does that mean that God is going to go and do some miraculous things today and go to the funeral home and no, but I promise you this, brother John Green woke up on the other side and he saw a healing that he couldn't see on this side. Why do you say that? I'm saying that God is on his way to your house and I'm going to do it here on your way. You got to understand that same time, the perfect healing comes on the other side and you got to be ready for it. I know it hurts, but you got to understand that if he chose to raise him up on this side or if he chooses to raise him up on the other side, there's still a healing in his life. The Bible said they scorned Jesus. That means they laughed at him. That means that they ridiculed him. That means they said that he's a, he's a fake. They lied on him. They said he stopped at the woman because he knew he couldn't heal her. You know how they do. <laughs> you know how most... Uh, 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 deliver the healers, uh, people that have the gift of healing, you know, rather than come in here and call out, call out breast, uh, everybody got a tumor in the breast. Take that kind of miracle that you got in your hands and in your spirit, take it to the hospital. That's, that's, why you, that's why you need to put your faith to work in, because we can, some of the things that we go through in church, we just need an aspirin. Who in here got a migraine? Somebody got a migraine. Shoot, if I stayed up all night like I did last night, I'm surprised I didn't have a migraine. <laughs> we throw our general stuff so that we don't miss anything. But when you have to do the hard thing, when you have to say to somebody that's reaching out for faith and it has not yet happened, you have to prophesy by faith, knowing that what you see in the future has not yet happened, and you have to say it anyway at the risk of somebody saying you're crazy. Jesus, you're crazy. The coroner already said she's dead. They pronounced her at 12 o'clock. <laughs> but Jesus tells them, said, I can't deal with you in the room. He said, you get out. And he took a couple of people with him. A few people with him. And when he gets in the room, he does something unusual. The same talif that the woman just touched. A lot of people think that Jesus was speaking in tongues. Talitha Kuma, it means little girl arise, 
but it's after the talith has touched her body. Yes, go ahead. Talith. Yes. Little one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Arise. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talith. The corner. Have faith. Go ahead. To leave. Go ahead. To cry. Arise. Little girl. And she gets up. And he says, Find her. Sin, Lord, did the mama or the daddy or even he sinned before time? Jesus said, Neither, but that the glory of God might be made manifest in him. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, you sing. That the way I was born is up to me how I end. Jesus just told them that no matter how you were born, if you have the faith to believe, you can end up different from the way you were born. And Jesus, and Jesus, get this, and Jesus does something unusual. Go ahead. He then takes and spit on the ground and anoints the, boy, the man's eyes and gives him instruction. Go ahead. Faith comes by hearing. Yeah. Romans 10 and 17. And hearing by. Go ahead now. And all of a sudden, as he's walking to the pool, and he washes his face, he comes back seeing. And when he comes back, people are talking about him. Yes. And then they say he looked like the boy or the man. <laughs> but it's something different about him. Yes. Uh, duh. <laughs> he can see now. Yes. And he ain't going to take no more of your mess. See, it's easy to talk about folk when they're blind. It's easy to, you know, walk past them and lick your tongue out and do you, you know. <laughs> but see, you can't do all that when people see. When people really find out who you are, some things you can, manipulation stops, baby. When you know the truth. <laughs> you can't manipulate me on something I know the truth about. And they come back, he come back and they were saying all kinds of stuff. And he straightened the whole matter out. He said, yes, I was blind. Yeah. <laughs> he said, but right now? <laughs> and then the Pharisees want to get involved. You know how church folk want to do it? Church folk are always people that want to get healed and get delivered. They always want to discredit the people that has gotten healed or delivered. Because they want you to stay in that same mode so they can keep manipulating you. That's right. That's right. But see, when you have to, when you rely on God now and you don't rely on them, you have no need for them no more. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The 
Bible said in Isaiah there was a there was a point in in Jewish law and also in the book of Leviticus where in the corners of the fields of Israel where they had to always put out in the corners of those fields for the poor and the poor would have something to eat they had to do that there was a law by God that was given and so now that he has no need to go to the poor corner and he could walk in where they're walking and he could do what they're doing because he had a greater work than what they had because he worked by faith and not by sight. <laughs> Isn't it strange that people didn't start treating you funny until the Lord came in your life? Isn't it strange? You had a slew of friends before you decided to do what was right. Yeah. Come on now, am I telling the truth? Somebody said, Bishop, you're telling the truth. Yeah. But the minute you decide to do right and you don't want to do wrong with them no more, then they cut you loose. But that's all right, get you a whole new crew. Get you a whole new crew, because you don't need them anyway. They were holding you back all this time. And that's what I'm telling you. The woman could have held back because of people. Jairus could have stopped Jesus from coming to his house. And the boy or the man could have said, I don't want to be healed if you got to spit on me. All I'm saying to you is that most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, whenever something comes to you by faith, it comes with instructions. And when you obey the instruction, that's when it comes. So simply, the reasons why we don't have a lot of things is because we're putting faith out there, but we're not putting no work with it. So James said, just as the body is without the spirit, so is faith without works. So then faith without works is Let me tell you one more thing and then I'm through. There is no way you could go over to the funeral home and jump through the door on somebody laying in the casket and say, boo! Now some of you just jump. But I promise you the person in that casket ain't gonna move. You could walk over to the casket and you could slap, sl sl slap. All it's going to do, they, you might move the casket in their body, but they ain't going to respond to it. You know why? Because it, the spirit is gone. Some of us are walking around dead. You hear, what, you hear what I'm saying? It's funny in one way, but it's sad in another. And you know what's wrong with it in a corporate setting? It's because if anything dead, we got to bury it. And what's wrong with that in a corporate setting when we don't have faith as a corporate body? When part of your body is dead and the, and the alive part has to carry it. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad because all it is is a mental thing. The man that was born, he was carried by his four friends. He wasn't paralyzed because his body was messed up. He was paralyzed because his mind was messed up. Because when Jesus attacked the problem, he said, your sins are forgiven. 
listen. Sin can put you in a position where it paralyzes your faith. And it causes things not to happen in your life. You can't keep playing with sin and expect for it not to affect your spiritual life. And it's so sad that we have to put up with it because we're all trying to get to a certain place. And we're on the live side trying, trying to drag you when all you have to do is say, I'm going to do better and get up and do better. Quit making excuses. After surgery, if you don't move that particular portion of your body, it atrophies. And, and it means it, it stopped having mobility. It loses its ability to function. Not because the things are not put back together, it's because of a lack of use. Faith, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. I never forget what an old preacher told me one time. My old past, my pastor told me this one time, and I never forgot this. And I was a little boy. I was a little boy when he told me. I was 16, 17 years old when he told me this. He said, "Brother Chapman, that's what he called me, Chapman. Brother Chapman, I tell you the truth." And then he said, "Shoot." He said, "I'd rather be lost in faith." than to be found without it. I said, I said, say that again. I start writing that down. I start writing that down so I could preach that. In the far reaches of being lost in faith, you're better off that at least you're reaching for something than to be found over here. The Bible says, the Bible says in one scripture, it says that when the Son of Man come, Will he find faith in the earth? The church as a whole, the universal church, we get more, we get more faith for money and prosperity than we do for our own salvation. All of us got loved ones that's dying and going to hell. And we need to be praying for those people rather than trying to get rich. Yeah. It's okay to prepare for the future. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is when you got somebody close to you dying and going to hell and you comfortable with it, there's something wrong with your faith. Let's stand to our feet. I'm through.